Right, so where are we now? We have a model that we are trying to fit the parameters to. Y equals mx plus b, a line. And we have an objective that we want to minimize, which is the sum of the squared vertical distances between the point and the line. And now the question is, well, how do you solve for m and b? Well, let's simplify the problem a little bit before we solve that full-blown problem. And let's go to a simpler model, y equals mx. Let me assume that the intercept is zero. So the line is gonna go through the origin, and I only have one degree of freedom, what is the slope? And the reason I'm gonna do this now is because the algebra is just a little bit simpler to do it, and then we'll solve the full problem of a line, and then we'll go from there. All right, so you know what? Let's just go ahead and redo the formulation of the objective, and then we'll do the optimization just to, remember, just to remind ourselves how this works. So I've got my parameter I'm estimating here, x. I wanna, uh, I wanna predict y. Um, I assume that it fits a, uh, uh, a zero intercept line with one degree of freedom, m. So let's write out what we want to optimize, minimize again. The vertical distance. What is the vertical distance between a point and the line? Well, a point here is at location yi. And the corresponding point, if we assume we're only looking at vertical distance, is at what? mxi, not mxi plus b, because b is zero now, we're assuming a, a zero intercept. So the error I want to minimize is mxi, where the, the point thinks it is according to the model, and where it actually is. And of course, I don't care about the sign of this, I don't care if it's negative or positive, so I'm going to square it and then sum it up over all n points. Okay, so my job now is to please find me the m that minimizes this. So here's a brute force way you can do this. Search for all n's, right? So try all possible slopes. So imagine you didn't care about runtime complexity. Imagine you didn't care about anything. Stick a value of m into this equation and evaluate it. I know what xi is, I know what yi is, that's all my data. That's my supervised learning part. I've given you all these data points and try an m and then try another m, and then try another m, and try all of them. I mean, there's obviously an infinite number of them, so, but try all of them, and one of them is gonna give you the minimum error, and that's going to be your answer. But that's a crappy way to do the optimization because it's incredibly inefficient and also completely unnecessary, as we're about to see. Um, but you could certainly have this huge for loop that just goes through all possible values of m and looking for the value that minimizes this. Let's see if we can do a little bit better, though. All right, so. Here is the objective that I want to minimize. Please minimize for me the sum of the squares of mxi minus y. In particular, find me the m that minimizes this quantity. Okay. All right, let's see what this quantity really is. Let's, 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 let's expand this a little bit to see what we're really working with here. All right, so let me take that mxi minus yi squared and actually uh, uh, do the cross multiplication here. So I've got mxi uh, minus yi, mxi minus yi. Let me go ahead and do the multiplication. This is inside the summation. Don't forget I've got a summation here. So let's just, let's just break that out right here. Let's see, I've got m squared, xi squared. That's the first term here. I've got two mxyi, that's the cross terms. And then I've got plus yi squared. Okay, again, that i is the index on what? Each point in your supervised learning um, data set. I've given you those pairings of xi, yi, and I'm trying to solve for m, the slope. By the way, notice there's an m there, and there's an m there. Okay. And of course, we're summing up over all the i's. Okay, so let's unpack that um, summation. So what do I have here? I have m, that m squared doesn't depend on the indexing variable. So I can pull that out, and then it's m squared times what? The sum of the squares of all the x component, x1 squared, x2 squared, up to xn squared. Okay, so that's the first term. The second term is 2m comes out of the summation because it doesn't depend on it. And then I've got 2m times x1, y1, plus x2, y2, plus x3, y3, all the way up to uh, n. And then, of course, the last term is just the sum of all the y squared and doesn't depend on m at all. So here's my unknown m, m squared right there, times, well, just some number, right? The sum of the squares of all the x components. Here's minus 2m, my unknown, times x1, y1, plus the sum of the squares of all the x and the y components, plus another constant over here. Allow me, if you will, to call this thing a, this thing b, and this thing c. They're just scalar values. Take all the x values, sum the squares, multiply them together, 
sum the squares of the y's, and I just get some number. And so what I get at the end of this is what? I get a times m squared plus b times m plus c. So this error up here that I want to minimize is the same as this. And sure they are. It's just some numeric value associated with a given m. So that is, take an m and shove it into this equation, and shove it into this equation, you'll get exactly the same answer because I've just worked through a little bit of algebra. What is this? am squared plus bm plus c. What is it? It's a parabola. Right? That, sure, it's got, an, it's got an m squared term, an m term, and a constant term. So it's one of these two things. It's either this or it's, it's uh, this over here because the parabola can be this or this. Why do I care what the shape of this is? What is this a parabola in? M. What is M? The slope of my line. I want to know what the M is. In fact, what do I want to know? This is the error as a function of M, or this is the error as a function of M. I'm not sure which one. Let's figure out which one of these it is first. So what is the difference between these two? It has to do with that first term in the M squared. So if that A term is greater than zero, then I have a parabola that does this. And if the a term is less than zero, I have a parabola that goes up um, this way. What is a in this case? Well, a is, is it this one or is it this um, over here? Well, let's look at what a is. It's x1 squared plus x2 squared all the way up to xn squared. Well, what is, do I know about these values? They must all be positive. And what's the sum of a bunch of positive values? Positive value. And so that means that my parabola must look like this one, not like this one over here. And why do I care about that? Because again, what is this parabola? It's a parabola in M. So that means that the horizontal axis here is M, and what's the vertical axis? The error is a function of M. How do I know that? Well, that's what I did, right? So I went from my error as a function of M, I did a little bit of algebra, and I came up with a parabola. And that tells me that as I move m from a, from a, a small number, from a negative number to a positive number, let's say, the minimum is going to be here. So now let's go back to that brute force thing I told you about. Remember I told you, try all values of m and find the minimum. But this should be a lot easier because I know that my error surface is quadratic. It's a parabola. And I know that I should be able to have some information here because I now know what my error surface looks like. This, by the way, is why I did that squaring up top, because it leads to this beautiful, smooth, parabolic error function that's going to make things a lot easier to minimize. So let's see how to minimize now. We've actually learned something. We've learned that we have a parabolic surface in M that we want to find the minimum of. All right, let's go back to our optimization. Please find for me the value of M that minimizes the sum of the squares of the difference between the model prediction, mxi, and the actual data point, yi. And that squared, again, is what gave us that parabolic surface. Notice now that I've also written this as a full-blown error function. The error is a function of m. Stick an m into this equation, evaluate it, that's the error. Stick another value, that's the error, and that will map out a parabola because that's what we just derived. How do I find a minimum of that parabola? What do I know about that parabola? I know that when it hits the minimum, the derivative is going to be zero. The tangent at the bottom of that is zero. By the way, this is why I also cared if it was a parabola like this or a parabola like that, because this one would be trouble because that's a maximum, not a minimum. But now that I know it's a parabola like this, I know that when the derivative of this error function is zero, I've hit the, the bottom. Very, very powerful and should help me with my optimization. All right, so let's remind ourselves where we are. E of m is in fact am squared plus bm plus c, where a is the sum of the square of the x components, b is minus 2 times the sum of the x and the y's, and c is the sum of the square of the y components. We derived that previously. So now what I want to do is take that error function, which all I've done, by the way, is I've just broken this out of the summation to make it a little bit easier to see. And what do I want to do? I, well, you know it's a parabola. We know that the minimum is going to be where the derivative is zero, because that's where the tangent is zero. So let's compute the derivative of E of M. This can't be that hard. It's just a parabola. All right. So the derivative of my error function as a function of M should be equal to zero. And that will tell me the value of M that corresponds to that minimum. 
All right, let's remember how to do derivatives. This is a pretty easy thing to, to, to differentiate. So the derivative of the error function is 2am. So remember, the, X, the, the power comes down. Um, the a, of course, is a scale factor, so it stays. And then you raise it to the power 1 minus um, what it was before. The derivative of bm, m to the 1, the 1 comes out, m to the 0 now, so m goes away. And of course, the derivative of c is simply 0. So the derivative of my quadratic error function right there is 2am plus b. Remember again, a is, is the sum of the squares of the x's, b is the all those x, y things, and m, of course, is what I want to know. Now, what do I want to do to that derivative? Tell me what the value of m is that drives that derivative to 0. Okay, fine. 2am plus b is equal to 0. Okay, now I have a simple linear equation. So if 2am plus b is 0, what is m? It's minus b over 2a. Just bring over the b term, divide by the 2a, and I've got m is equal to minus b over 2a. And again, b depends on the xy coordinates, and a depends on the x squared components, and there is my solution. This is our first least squares, sometimes called regression solution, for fitting a line to a bunch of data points, our first supervised learning regression. And you've probably seen regression before, and you've probably even used regression before. I've simply derived that from first principles by specifying a model, specifying an objective to be minimized, and then actually doing the minimization. Good. So now, that was, with only one unknown, it was relatively easy because we could write everything out, and because our, what we were minimizing was a parabola Right? Because I only have one unknown. What happens when you have two unknowns, M and B? It's not Because now I have two things I'm optimizing over, the slope and the intercept. So things are going to get a little bit more complicated, but conceptually exactly the same. Specify a model. Specify an objective and minimize. And what we're going to see next is what happens when we bring that intercept back in. And then we're going to go through those steps all over again to make sure that we can optimize this when we have two and, of course, three, four, and five parameters. So we'll do that when we come back.